I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. Welcome to AP Physics 1, Unit 1. We are working on freefall problems. This is a classic freefall problem. People everywhere love it your professors and teachers because we can use quite a few UAM concepts and free fall concepts all in the same problem. So we're just gonna get started and we'll draw this out and see what it looks like. But we have, uh, what they're asking for is, what is a rocket's maximum height if the rocket has a net acceleration of 35 meters per second per second or meters per second squared with fuel and then it runs out of fuel at 1.25 kilometers. We're going to assume no air resistance and the rocket is shot vertically. Okay, well, let's just get started here. And we're going to draw this out. So we have this first part where we have this rocket that's on the launch pad and it's moving upward. It has an acceleration of 35 meters per second squared. It has an initial velocity of zero. How do I know that? It didn't tell me that, but the rocket is at rest on the launch pad and then is launched. So it is at rest initially. All right, and then it goes 35 meters per second squared. At this height of 1,250 meters, because yes, we do need to get kilometers into meters, so that's gonna be 1,250 meters. If you're unsure how to do that, um, that's to do a dimensional analysis to get that. There's a thousand meters in every one kilometer. All right, so then once it runs out of fuel, the answer is not like, oh, easy peasy, the answer is 1,250 meters. Uh, not that easy. The problems are never that easy, and it's not true because at that height of 1,250 meters, there is some velocity here. It was at zero, but then it accelerated and there's some velocity. And this rocket is gonna continue upward until it has a zero meter per second velocity at the top. And that is a uh, free fall concept that when the object gets to its maximum height, its velocity is zero because it's for a split second momentarily stops to turn around to come back down. All right, so that's how we know that it is displaced more after it after it runs out of fuel. Now, however, though, the acceleration here, only Earth is taking over. There is no more fuel for this thing to accelerate a positive 35 meters per second squared. So Earth is taking over and it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, it is going to be speeding up in this first part with fuel. It's gonna be speeding up. How do we know that? Because velocity is positive and acceleration is positive. And remember, if acceleration and velocity are both in the same direction, meaning they're both positive, they have the same sign. And if they have the same sign, you know they're speeding up. So if they're speeding up, they both have the same signs. And this is, I'm gonna put with fuel here so we can see that. Now, in the second part though, without fuel, without fuel, our velocity is still positive. Why? Because this object, this rocket, is moving up the entire time, and we define up as positive. So velocity is positive the entire, entire time until it hits max height, where it is zero meters per second. But my acceleration here is negative because the Earth is wanting to pull it down. So it is indeed slowing down and look, don't your velocity numbers tell you that? You're gonna have some velocity here after it accelerates and then it's going to zero. So it is in fact slowing down. And our signs are opposite. Remember, if slowing down, you have opposite signs of acceleration of velocity, meaning opposite directions because those signs just mean direction. All right, perfect. We're just gonna get started. We're gonna get started with our with fuel section, okay? So we have fuel in this first part. I'm gonna identify my variables. My acceleration is 35 meters per second squared, and that is indeed positive. My delta Y, or my displacement in the Y while it has fuel, is 1,250 meters. I recognize that on your formula sheets for the AP board, it says delta X. But that is just a, uh, if it's moving horizontal, I like to 
uh, put delta y for the symbol if it's moving vertically. That way I can keep those two directions separate and I'm in the habit of that for what's coming next, which is 2D motion. All right, so since we're moving vertical, I'm gonna call that delta y my displacement instead of delta x. I know that my initial velocity is zero meters per second as it's at rest on the launch pad. And I want to know my final velocity. Now, why do I need to know that final velocity? Because that final velocity, and I'm gonna go to yellow here, right here to the right of my screen, that final velocity with fuel becomes the initial velocity without fuel. So that's what that velocity, what it's gonna start with after it runs out of fuel, when you're in the without fuel part, that's gonna be the initial, and the final is gonna be zero in that second part of the problem, because this is, in fact, two parts to this problem. One where the acceleration is 35 meters per second, and then there's that clue, we've talked about that clue before, and then there is a change, and now you're without fuel. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to um, go to my big three. I'm going to use my V final squared equals my V initial squared or my velocity, initial velocity squared plus two times my acceleration in that Y times my delta Y. And I'm gonna use those little subscripts because I like to remind myself I'm moving in the vertical direction or if you're thinking of a, a graph, the Y axis direction, okay? My final velocity, I would love to know my initial uh, velocity in the Y is just zero, and I had it right here, it's at rest. My acceleration, a two times my acceleration in the Y is not negative 9.81 because this has fuel. This is fuel with a motor that is causing acceleration or with an engine. All right, so that's 35. And my delta Y, I actually know my displacement in the Y for this part is 1,250 meters. All right, that I had a little mark there. Let me get that, perfect. All right, so now my final velocity for this is 295.8 meters per second. So now I know my final velocity with fuel. So I'm gonna write that right over here, that my velocity right here is 295.8 meters per second. And that's gonna become my initial velocity in the next part. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do the next part and I'm gonna go to red and I'm gonna do without fuel. I'm gonna make a second cross to identify my variables. I know here my acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared because it's without fuel now and the earth has taken over and that is the pull, the acceleration of uh, from the earth. My final velocity is now zero, not my initial. Why? Because I am now at the top up here where it momentarily stops to turn around at maximum height. My initial velocity, I know, I just figured it out. It's 295.8 meters per second after it accelerated to 1,250 meters. I need my delta Y. Why? That's my displacement. Because if I know my displacement without fuel, I can add it to my displacement down here with fuel and I will have my total height, my maximum height, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of this. So we have a little bit of room over here so I can do this equation now that we have that all written down. And we are going to start, we're gonna use the same exact equation that we used before. I'm gonna use my v fi my final velocity squared equals my initial velocity squared plus two times my acceleration, and I'm gonna use those subscripts, times delta y. My final, we said, was zero. My initial was 295.8. Do not forget to square that. That's a very common mistake. Time uh, plus two times my acceleration of negative 9.81 times delta y. All right, if you, if you square 295.8, subtract it from both sides of the equation, and then divide by, uh, you're gonna get, divide by two and then negative 9.81, you're gonna get a delta y of 4,464.3 meters, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of this as well. Now that is only without fuel. 
Now I need to add add that to with fuel. So really, my total here, my total or maximum, I'm going to call that max height, is going to be that total. It's called the total uh, displacement or the maximum height, if I can get that out. Oh, my land, talking is hard. Uh, I am going to add that uh, displacement in the first part with fuel to this displacement in the second part without fuel. So that's going to be 1,250 plus 4,464.3 meters. That's going to give me a max height of 5,000. 714 meters. I've got two sig figs all over this prop. Well, I have two as my, my uh, minimum there. So I'm going to go 5,700 meters. And that is my max height or my displacement in the vertical direction.